Solo leveling. Solo leveling. Solo leveling. Solo leveling. Solo leveling. So, if it isn't apparent, Solo leveling got an anime. But how did we get to this point? For over eight years, one Manwa has been collectively agreed upon to be the king of power fantasy. Tomb Raider King, Omniscient Reader, Solo Necromancy have all made a name for themselves in this genre, but none have been able to garner a cult-like following Solo Leveling has done. Despite its simplistic nature, the manhwa has managed to touch an entire community, inspire many authors to take bits and pieces from this story and incorporate it into their own, and has been sitting at the very top of Mal rating for honestly as long as I can remember. Speaking of, I don't think I've ever seen any other manhwa dethrone it. With the massive success of Solo Leveling, more and more dungeon-esque leveling manwas came out. For a lot of people, this story is the perfect gateway to webtoons. Its simple plot, alluring art, and iconic fight sequences are what breathes the series life, and it's all centered around such a cool character that most scenes that should be cringe or things that shouldn't work, just work. The manwa isn't trying to be anything it's not. You know what you're getting into when you read this series. It's dumb but entertaining, predictable but hard to put down, and is a story that left many fans around the world with one question. Will this manhwa ever get an anime adaptation? Huh. Okay. Solo leveling at an anime. Solo leveling got an anime adaptation, what? Well, hold on, gentlemen. Before we get excited, we can't look past the horrible track record of manhwa adaptation. Bring them in. Tower of God, God of High School, Noblesse, Look at them. We're all anticipated to have a great anime adaptation, but most, if not all, fell short. There are whispers within the community that lots of things are being changed, such as the setting and character. The kept the character's name and the setting for the anime what solo leveling is possibly one of the most anticipated anime to be released for years many fans have been begging for an anime adaptation and it finally happened okay i've seen enough anime of the year solo leveling is a manhwa turned anime following the story of sun jin woo aka the world's weakest hunter in this world, gates started to appear, bringing along many mythical beings and creatures to wreak havoc on their world. As this started to happen, many people began to awaken, giving some the power to fight against these beings. With this new development, the Hunter organization was born, creating a spot for people to build a community and guild around hunting. Every hunter and gate is split into rankings, with S being the highest, all the way down to E. The higher ranking you are, the higher ranked dungeons you can enter, earning you a ton of rewards, fame, and wealth. Hunters generally make a ton of money due to the high demand and dangers that come with the job. Sun decides to become a hunter to help fund his mother's hospital treatment and help pay for his sister's tuition. One problem though, the guy couldn't even hurt a fly if he wanted to. One day, he and a group of low ranking hunters would enter a gate and find a mysterious tunnel. Some are unsure if they want to continue, while others think of this as an opportunity to earn more rewards. So I they hold a vote, a vote, leading it to be a majority tie, leaving our MC to be the tiebreaker. Thinking back on his mom's treatment and needing this money to help his sister's schooling, he decides to enter the gate. Spoiler! This is possibly the worst outcome they could have picked. I'm, doing. I'm leaving! Almost the entire group gets wiped, leaving just three people. They make it to this altar that signals one must be a sacrifice in order for the rest to leave. Since between the three of them, Sun lost his leg and this girl being unable to move due to her manner being drained, Sun decides to sacrifice himself to allow the rest of them to survive. Right before he dies, he wishes for one more chance. 
one more opportunity and out of thin air He wakes up in a hospital bed with this video game UI floating right in front of him. This new system is something only he's able to see and it comes with the option for him to level up his stats. Stats such as strength, agility, intelligence, pretty much everything you would see in a standard RPG. At first he thinks the system isn't real. One of the daily tasks it requires he does is 100 push ups, 100 sit ups, 100 squats and a 10 kilometer run. The guy ignores this and goes to sleep. But as soon as the timer goes off, oh, he gets transported into this desert realm where he has to survive for four hours while getting chased by this thing. Luckily though, he survives, even gets a reward at the end. Nice. So Tuss begins the tale of what was once known as the weakest hunter of mankind, turning into the one they rely on when all hope is gone. One of the things that's really enjoyable is seeing the main character develop throughout the story. He goes from this little, little baby, baby man, man who couldn't even hurt a goblin to then being able to clear a dungeon <sighs> all on his own. <sighs> Everything isn't handed to him. Well, aside from the actual system, we see the countless hours and work he's put in, his power progression evolve, and see how he obliterates practically any monster. Seeing someone who is considered weak or a liability turn into someone who is looked at for strength is just so extremely satisfying. The anime for the most part has been extremely fateful. I don't want to jump the gun just yet since there are only 6 episodes at the time of me recording. They seem to be animating scenes that help push the story's narrative while keeping the areas that aren't as important out of the anime. Especially episode 6, titled The Real Hunt Begins. This is hands down the best episode out so far. Prior to this episode, Sun entered a gate that has a group of fellow low ranking hunters. Everything is going smoothly but throughout the entire time being there, Sun gets this strange feeling from the dungeon leader. First, they enter a raid without a healer. Kinda strange but whatever. Second, there's a contract that must be signed stating no liability for anything that happens inside the dungeon. And third, they purposely left them in the boss room and closed off all of their exits in hopes of them dying. While this guy is panicking, oh my God, dude, son is gonna like, die. Haha, bro, don't worry, I'd win. The fight sequences, the opening that plays in the background slowly rising at the climax, and the realization that the only threats in this world isn't just monsters, but other hunters as well, was done so well. Not only in the manhwa, but adapted perfectly in the anime. When this episode dropped, countless YouTube videos, Twitter tweets, and endless comments praised this episode, cementing many doubters and proving A1 pictures are more than qualified to handle this beloved work. When it comes to the story of solo leveling, it does nothing great nor does it add some sort of new innovative element to its story. It takes many different niches and stereotypes and combines it all together. I remember reading this series back when I just entered high school. It's the very first manhwa I have ever read and holds a special place in my heart. I, like many others, enjoyed reading this series over the years and adored the story's ability to get you hyped at any given moment. Finally, years later, going from one rumor to the next, seeing this manhwa, these characters come to life and animated is such a surreal feeling. The story has this way of making you develop this connection with the main character and you start to feel every emotions and battles Sun experiences. The moments where he desperately wants to become stronger or the parts in the story where he's powerless to do anything. We're there from the very beginning all the way to the end. Sun is a relatable guy. He's just a dude who does everything he can to try and support the only family he has left. Seeing him fight against his fears take out a group of wolves on his own or seeing the friends he made along his journey is what makes this manhwa so special. If you're a fan of power fantasy, OP characters and enjoy watching some of the most pristine and fleshed out fight choreographies, then give the anime or manhwa a shot.